течение ночи быстро течено. Молчание ночи быстро течено. Daniel Dimitri Rodriguez, more well known as D-Boy, was born on November 10th, 1967. He'd go on to be one of Christian Rap's first street-centered acts, one of the first Christian rappers to make extensive use of sampling, and unfortunately, Christian Rap's first martyr. Before we delve in, quick disclaimer. A lot of the information I'm about to share with you is from a 2018 Rapzilla interview with D-Boy's little sister, Jeannie Lopez. So credit to Rapzilla and Mrs. Lopez. It's not a stretch to say that Daniel had a rough childhood. Despite both of his parents having substance abuse and financial problems, they came together and started a family, as well as a ministry. As a kid, Danny and his siblings would witness the prostitutes on the streets of Pennsylvania to get them away from their pimps and drug dealers. The family would eventually move to Texas and form the Street Church Academy to focus on anti-gang activities. During that time, he was also honing his skills as an MC. He saw that rap music was quickly influencing the youth with the rise of groups like NWA and Public Enemy. Thus, he decided to place a Christian message in his music. Daniel spent his school time freestyling in the lunchroom and writing raps. He left what could have been a promising semi-pro basketball career to instead fill notebooks up with his rap lyrics. When the Rodriguez family got to Dallas, Jeannie Lopez recalled that Daniel didn't really care if he was allowed into churches because he always had an audience. She said that he was truly a street minister. Where he needed it to work, it worked. When your critics are actual gang members, they're going to let you know the truth. So Danny honed his talents with a true core of action. Daniel knew the time was right to pursue his dreams after he saw the success of Christian rap pioneers Stephen Wiley, DC Talk, and Preachers in Disguise. Of course, there were other Christian rappers before D-Boy, but according to Jeannie Lopez, he was the first one on the streets. Jeannie went on to say that they couldn't play artists like DC Talk or Stephen Wiley. Danny liked them, but he knew that it wouldn't fly in the streets. They'd get laughed at if they tried or if Daniel imitated them. There was an audience for them, but certainly not the one that was around Daniel and Jeannie. D-Boy eventually signed with Frontline Records and released his debut album, Planting a Seed, in 1989. A huge contributor to the album's creation was the Christian blue-eyed soul singer, Tim Minor. He helped in technical roles like producing, arranging, and engineering, as well as playing bass, keys, and guitar all over the album. D-Boy's song, Pick Yourself Up, which he co-wrote with Tim Minor and Tommy Sims of the band Right Heart, became a top 10 hit on Christian radio, peaking at number 8. It would be D-Boy's one and only charting song. So, how good was D-Boy's debut record? In my opinion, it was okay. D-Boy's skills shone through on every track. Just from this 9-track album, it's clear that he was leagues ahead of most of his peers, including Stephen Wiley and Michael Peace. But there were still some embarrassing lows on the record. Like track 2, Church Hoppers, which talks about a serious problem that doesn't get mentioned in Christian rap enough. It's too bad D-Boy's lyrics felt too gimmicky to convey that. Another example was the hit single, Pick Yourself Up, which I'm sure uncoincidentally is the most non-hip-hop song on the album. I like the singing, but D-Boy's soft, vanilla ice sounding raps don't work at all. And finally, there was Dog and the Devil, in which D-Boy felt the need to do a cringy, reggae slash Rastafarian stereotype voice in the chorus. Despite all that, I thought the overall album was okay, with the highlight track being God's Posse in effect, which is a showcase for just how talented and ahead of his time D-Boy was. According to his sister, the album didn't sell well because Christian hip-hop was still in its infancy, so there wasn't much money going around. As a matter of fact, Jeannie recalled some of the wives of the Christian rap group Preachers in Disguise said that D-Boy would be sweeping 
mopping floors, and doing dishes, basically cleaning the studio for extra money, while he was making his second album. Genie suspects that something wasn't right and that the studio was taking extra money. She said that it made no difference to Daniel because that's the kind of servant attitude he had anyway. D-Boy just wanted to rap about Jesus, but when he got behind the mic at a regular studio, they'd basically tell him, don't rap about God, just rap. Danny's friend who DJed and Jeannie's current husband Joe, who was present when it happened, said that Daniel just stared at the mic and said, I can't do this, I don't care, I don't have money for my rent, I'm eating beans that I heat over the fireplace, I'm just not going to do it. Joe was one of the DJs saying, come on, I'll DJ, you rap. For Daniel's second album, he dropped the polished look and feel of planting a seed for the more rough around the edges livelihood that he knew better. The album was called The Lyrical Strength of One Street Poet. Released in 1990, the project was a moderate success, peaking at 35 on the Billboard Christian Albums chart. But none of the songs charted thanks to it having a raw sound that the Christian music industry didn't accept at that time. Which is a shame because this album is a great body of work. He improved his lyricism, which is the best I've heard in 80s Christian rap so far, his flows, deliveries, and instrumentals. He did an exceptional job with each message and didn't have any cringy moments this time around. To me, the album didn't sound that raw, but I'm sure that back then it must have fit that description better. Unfortunately, it's shortly after this album's release that D-Boy's life was cut short. On October 6, 1990, Daniel D-Boy Rodriguez was shot outside of his apartment at 3.55 a.m. To this day, the shooter and motive are unknown, but some have believed that it was done to stop D-Boy from steering street kids away from drugs. He died an hour after the shooting at Baylor Medical Center in Dallas. D-Boy's The Lyrical Strength of One Street Poet got nominated for a Dove Award in 1991, but DC Talk took home the award for their album New Thing. They'd go on to dedicate it to D-Boy, saying that it should be his. In 1993, Frontline Records released a compilation album, Peace to the Poet, which also boasted two new songs, God Gave Us the Power and I Caught the Mic. Christian rappers Corey Red and Precise paid tribute to D-Boy on their dope track, Martyr's Anthem, which appeared on their 2004 collab album, Resistance is Futile. In 2006, a cover album was released, The Fallen Soldier Compilation, a tribute to D-Boy which featured D-Boy's most popular tracks being remade by multiple artists, including Dynamic Twins, Idol King, and Lingo. D-Boy was also honored with the Legacy Lifetime Award at the 2015 Legacy Conference. D-Boy was one of the most talented Christian rappers of the genre's early years. He possessed a level of lyricism, flow, and delivery that was hard to come by in that era of Christian hip-hop. Not only was he one of the first to use extensive sampling, but he also helped to introduce a more hardcore sound to the subgenre, which went on to influence another Christian rap legend, T-Bone. With more time on this earth, only God knows how much more he would have accomplished. Nevertheless, D-Boy will forever be remembered as a Christian rap pioneer. Rest in peace, Daniel D-Boy Rodriguez.